Pirates on a tear for a long time with this KCI deck. We're going to see him in action here in round 11 versus Haley Olu with Titan Shift. All right, Reed, this is a two decks kind of that are going to be ships in the night here, I think, in this matchup. Right, another combo on combo matchup. We're, we're tuning in for game number two. So Matt Nass, as he is he is wont to do, has won game number one. But after sideboarding, uh, Lou is going to get to bring in some artifact destruction, things like Ancient Grudge, Damping Sphere, if you would like to turn to that card, Relic of Progenitus. So a little bit more interactivity combined with the fact that he gets to play first. Um, could make this a lot more of a competition. So we're jumping in game two here. Matt Nass currently up a game over our Titan Shift player. We've got an Ancient Stirrings being resolved. Well, just as I talked about Burn in our main feature match, I think Titan Shift is one of the underappreciated decks in, in Modern. It's been around for a while, and I love its just consistency and straightforward game plan. Basically, you have the one-card combo of Primeval Titan plus uh, virtually every other yeah, card in the deck producing card. mana. So it, it's rare in Modern to achieve a level of uh, consistency and redundancy like Titan Shift and Burn do, and I really, really appreciate that in a long Magic tournament. So for people unfamiliar with Titan Shift, Reed, how does it win? Well, the key card is Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle which is a land that says whenever a mountain enters a battlefield under your control, if you have five other ma uh, mountains, you get to Lightning Bolt something, three damage. So uh, with Primeval Titan, you have six lands in play, you cast it, you search for two Valakuts. Next turn, you get to attack, search for two mountains, deal 12 damage, play one for your hand, that's 18. Um, additionally, this deck can uh, combo even more with Scape Shift, resetting seven or eight lands and just killing the opponent immediately with right. uh, with six or 12 Valakut triggers, or using Through the Breach to attack with uh, Primeval Titan and deal sometimes 18, sometimes more damage all in one go. Would you say KCI achieves its combo more often, more quickly than a deck like Titan Shift? Yes, I would say Ironworks is, is definitely faster. The Titan Shift deck, you're usually looking at turn four um, with Turn four with, with pretty decent consistency, but Ironworks is uh, turn four or sometimes turn three, so about half a turn difference there. Plus, um, Titan Shift, sometimes when you're comboing, you don't win immediately. A lot of times it'll just be a Titan and say go, which is good enough to beat a fair deck, like Humans or Jun, but sometimes not good enough to actually deal 20 damage and win a combo uh, mirror that's, that's largely a race. Similarly, Scape Shift with seven lands deals only exactly 18 damage, so if Matt Nass is at 20, he could still win the game, even through a Scape Shift. So, all things considered, I, I have to give the nod to Ironworks in this matchup. You can see that Helio has a Damping Spear in play out of the sideboard. And there we go, Valak at the Mountain Pinnacle coming into play for Helio. Back over to Matt. Now, Damping Sphere in this matchup is fascinating because when, I, uh, when I've seen Damping Sphere boarded in by a deck like Humans, the Ironworks deck has answers. They can use Engineer Explosives or perhaps Nature's Claim to get rid of that, but I wouldn't necessarily expect those cards to be in Matt Nass's deck post-sideboard. Maybe he has some Nature's Claim if he's worried about Relic of Progenitus, but uh, I don't think he's going to have the maximum number of Engineered Explosives. Inventor's Fair here hitting the bin in exchange for a Kark Clan Ironworks, a key piece to Matt Nass's puzzle. So you see both players having set up well. Lou with Valakut and five mountains, so that means every additional mountain will start uh, bolting Matt Nass. A Scape Shifter, a Primeval Titan, gets him very close to lethal damage. And Matt, on the other hand, able to deploy Kark Clan Ironworks with a bunch of artifacts in play, but probably not able to combo immediately in the face of that Damping Sphere. Action on Matt Nass here, trying to decide what to do with this turn, that Ironworks in hand. And we're going to deploy it. Yeah, 
Dark Steel Citadel. Now this is a really tricky situation and a lot to keep track of because Damping Sphere is in play. That's not shutting Matt Nast down because this Ironworks deck is capable of producing a tremendous amount of mana. So Matt Nast could easily play two or three more spells in this turn if he would like. However, the Damping Sphere with the sort of exponential growth of how much it, it increases the cost of spells will eventually shut down the Ironworks deck even, um, even if Matt can produce a, a tremendous amount of mana. So he has to decide how much am I going to spend? What am I going to do on this turn? How deep can I dig for an answer to that Damping Sphere? And at what point do I stop? Great point, Reed. And Damping Sphere, a lot of times people think about it as a card you bring in to hate against something like Tron, uh, making their lands only tap for colorless mana and only one. But it also has a second ability. Each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that players cast this turn. You can see the players kind of keep track of that with some dice. And Ancient Grudge here hitting that Ironworks, but we're going to net ourselves a couple of mana in the process. Play a Chromatic Star. All right, back over to Helio Lu. So he could win this, the game yeah. this turn if he had the right cards, but he does not. Just has to play that Windswept Teeth and pass. But that is pretty nice on this on this board because keep in mind his uh, his remaining lands other than the windswept teeth are five mountains and valakut. So what having the windswept teeth means is that he can produce a lightning bolt effect at instant speed, which could be important if Matt is comboing with a scrap trawler. Um, Lou has at least some small amount of interaction available. He also has the ancient grudge in the graveyard, so all is not lost even though shields are down a little bit. Or maybe I shouldn't say shields down, but rather that he, yeah. he missed a good opportunity to win the game. So here's a Mind Stone from Matt Nass. <laughs> and he says go. Helio draws for turn. It's another land. Well, a bit surprised that he's not casting this Reclamation Sage just to destroy, yeah. say, Mox Opal. Um, th this is a game where he may not win with comboing, but instead by nickel and diming damage. So just having a two-power attacker over the course of a couple turns, that that's relevant. Um, I'm not sure what in particular he's saving it for, but I would be very interested in just getting a, a beater onto the battlefield in this uh, in this stalled game. Matt's going to take a bolt there to 16 off of the land from Helio. He has the Ancient Grudge in the graveyard anyway, so if That's he needs true. to kill uh, Clan Ironworks, yeah, here we go. He is going to cast it. I, I like this decision. And there's Rex Sage taking out the Mox Opal. The reason you see that uh, Matt Nass sacrificing Mindstone instead of Terrarion or Chromatic Star is because if he does play Clark Clan Ironworks, he gets to sacrifice those cards for card drawing and mana, whereas Mindstone you have to make the choice. Chromatic Star crack here from Matt Nass draws a card, finds another land. Here's another Mind Stone. And passes the turn. Wow, I've never seen KCI pass the turn this many times, <laughs> at least in the on camera this weekend. Oh, and Lou picked up Primeval Titan. Oh, it did. First things first, Rex Sage is going to peck in for two damage here. And there's a land. And there is Prime Time. And here you see the benefit of leaving these fetch lands uncracked. Lou can search up either two Valakuts or, say, a Valakut and a Mountain, and then sacrifice the fetch lands for six points of burn. And uh, this should do it. All right, there we go. Two Valakuts. And crack, crack. Get a couple of Mountains. Take 18. 
And that is Helio Lou tying things up here, one game apiece. <laughs> Heading right into game number three. Matt Nass on Crook Clan Ironworks versus Helio Lou on Titan Shift. Relic of Progenitus will start things off for Helio and a Terrarian for Matt. So every time we've seen Ironworks on camera so far this weekend, I've mentioned the same recipe for how you beat it, and that is fast clock combined with a couple of pieces of well-placed disruption. That's exactly what Helio was able to do in that game where he had Damping Sphere, which did a lot of work, really, really dramatically slowed down Matt Nass. Plus, he had Ancient Grudge at the key moment to take out the, uh, the Ironworks from Matt Nass. So that combined with Primeval Titan off the top to really drop the hammer makes for a pretty respectable uh, game plan against Ironworks. Still, as we mentioned, Ironworks a bit faster, very, very powerful deck in its own right. I'm not counting Matt Nass out of this, but Lou at least has a, uh, a game plan that has shown to be functional. This, this could work. And here's an agate from Matt Nass. Okay, so this is a, this is a shortcut that Lou was employing that is, is, is proving to not be appropriate. What he did was he cracked a windswept heath and put Farseek into the graveyard, and his intention was to search for a forest with the windswept heath and a stomping ground with the Farseek, but he didn't do it in that order. Right. So now Matt Nass deciding to negate the Farseek, he's saying, well, now we have a problem because you put two lands onto the battlefield, and uh, that's, not, that's not correct. So we're going to have uh, these players talk it over, maybe get a judge involved and, and settle things. I think the proper solution should be that Lou searches for a forest with the windswept teeth. That seems fair to me, but the judges will officiate um, better than I ever could. Yeah, shortcuts in magic sometimes get, uh, can get you into trouble, if, just like this situation here, if you're not careful. The reason that I think Lou should be committed to getting a forest is because getting basic forest is not legal with the Farseek. So by doing it this way, he, he has, in my opinion, unequivocally indicated that his intention was to fetch for basic forest with windswept teeth. Okay, so it looks like they are talking things over with a judge and getting this uh, sorted out. Qualifier event. That is time in the round. We are keeping Matt Nass, by the way, in our future match area for the foreseeable future as he plays this KCI deck that he is so well known for. We were uh, we discovered a stat this morning from him. I think it was fifty. He was fifty-five and six or something like that with the deck at the Grand Prix level, um, and that is matches played, which is a ninety-point-one percent win rate with the deck, which is absolutely absurd. Phenomenal. I, I could not believe it when I heard those numbers. And we were talking about what are some other players who are as iconic with their decks as Matt Nass is becoming with Clark Clan Ironworks. And some that have been suggested, Yoda Takahashi with Fairies, Owen with Pack Rat, Adam Yurchik with Thopter Depths, Rath Levy with Domain Zoo, Paula Vita Damadrosa with Esper Dragons. But um, I don't know if any of them have that kind of win percentage. No, that's that's really astounding. You you tend to think of an elite player with one of the best decks in the format, usually achieving something in the in the low 60s in right. terms of Grand Prix win rate. Um, so Matt Nass to to, to crack the 90% mark really indicates that he is he's something special and his deck is something special. Chat suggests read Duke with Jund. Uh, well, <laughs> that's very kind of you to bring up, but I've had. Uh, plenty of, of missed day twos with John at the Grand Prix level as well. So it's, while I, while I have had a bit of success, nowhere near 90% win rate. Okay, we've got things sorted out. So we've got a, a basic mountain, basic forest in place in play for Helio. Now we're back over to Matt Nass, who's got an, uh, an ancient stirrings resolving here. We're going to take this Inventor's Fair and play a Chromatic Star Pass to turn back over to Liu. Double Damping Sphere in hand. Wow. Now, the second one a lot less effective than the first, in particular because a single Engineered Explosives could take them both out for one, uh, for one shot. But we saw Damping Sphere do a lot of work in, in protecting 
Lou from a fast combo. He also has the Relic of Progenitus to stop any Scrap Trawler shenanigans. So he's in a relatively safe position until Matt can find an answer to the Damping Sphere. But the question is, what can Lou uh, make happen for himself, given that his Farseek got countered, right. and given that so many have, of his draws have been non-mana cards, these, uh, these sideboard cards that he brought in to fight Nasus combo. So two Damping Spheres in play now for Helio Lu. I see a Primeval Titan in hand. Crook Clan Ironworks hits the table too for Matt Nass here. Buried Ruin in play. And now we're keeping track of some Crook Clan Ironworks mana. Progenitus is going to exile that Terrarian. How effective of a card is Relic versus Court Clan Ironworks, do you think? It's not a backbreaker, but it, it's good. And the nice thing about Relic of Progenitus is it's an extremely low-cost card. If Lou is ever in a situation where, well, I need some action, I need to hit my land drop, he could just go ahead and crack it, and it didn't really cost him anything. But I do find that one of the better ways to interact with Ironworks is keeping up some graveyard hate, like... Relic of Progenitus, Nihil Spellbomb, Scavenging Ooze, whatever it might be, just to, to make sure Scrap Trawler can't do what the Ironworks player wants it to do. All right, well, we've netted enough mana for one of my favorite cards in the KCI deck, Spine of Isha. Okay, so Matt going to go to work on these Damping Spheres one at a time. <laughs> but here, the Relic doing a lot of work because... If this spine yeah, is Matt's answer true. to both Damping Spheres, he's going to have to sacrifice it, put it at least temporarily in the graveyard, and Lou could then sacrifice the Relic in response to get rid of it. So uh, Matt might here be forced to target the Relic, which uh, really is is a is kind of a poor outcome for the Spine of Ishsa because Lou does get to, to crack the Relic in response and uh, maintain card parity. So Relic of Progenitus was the choice here from Spine of Isha. And uh, the Relic's just going to get sacrificed in response. Lou is doing very nicely here. He, he picks up a land drop. He's got Primeval Titan set to go next turn. There's not that many cards in the Ironworks deck, even after sideboarding, that can stop Primeval Titan. So this is still anybody's game, and Matt really desperately needs Engineered Explosives to take out those two Damping Spheres if he's going to stay in the game. A backup Relic of Progenitus procured for Helio Lu here, too. Hits the table for him this turn. There's a Mind Stone for Matt Nass. And a Chromatic Sphere and a pass. All right, here we go. Six mana. On the way for Helio Lu. So you got to think that Primeval Titan is an appealing play this turn, but what it does mean is that the Relic would be would be down. He would not have one extra mana available to hold up the Relic. So instead, he's going to play very conservatively or conservatively here, passing the turn, keeping up the Relic, and uh, does he have any other interaction in hand? Maybe an Ancient Grudge? But he's uh, he really wants to keep his shields up. So Helio Lu passes the turn back over to Matt Nass. Or perhaps I missed Saw, and maybe he doesn't have Titan in his hand at all. Yeah, this has been, you know, Healy Lou is making Matt Nass's life a little complicated here. <laughs> oh, definitely. Psy Master Thopter is here for Nass. Now, Psy is an amazing card in this deck, and you can imagine Psy pretty rapidly producing three, four, five, six Thopters. Still, it's not exactly what you're looking for in a in a combo mirror match where it's all about racing because trying to attack with Thopters for the win, that takes a handful of turns, and uh, Matt Knight might not have that type of time. That said, it is a really good way to circumvent these Damping Spheres, so it does put the pressure on Lou to um, have something to force the action. He can't just sit around. We're going to get a Thopter there from that Chromatic Sphere from Matt Nass. So, so Sai producing one 1-1 one, one Flyer. And now back over to Helio Lu, who has just kind of been playing it safe so far this game and uh, surviving because of it. But as you said, those softers might start to put pressure on. Oh, he has Scape Shift in hand. Oh. So he could win the game here. No, not quite. He's uh, 
He's one short because of that basic forest. His decision to go for that on turn two with his windswept teeth means that he cannot trigger Valakut here before casting Scapeshift, and therefore cannot deal the full 20 points of damage. Wow. There's Primeval Titan for Helio Lu. Gets another Valakut onto the table. So he has two, I'm sorry, no triggers yet. That's only the fifth mountain. It's the sixth mountain that actually triggers. And he's going to deal six to Psy. So emergency situation for Matt Nass. He's thinking, okay, at minimum, the, the least that I can do this turn to stay in the game is kill the Primeval Titan. So he might start his turn by sacrificing Spine of Ishsaw, forcing the issue on that Relic of Progenitus. But really, Matt wants to win the game this turn, if at all possible, because now he's vulnerable to a second Primeval Titan or a Scapeshift, killing him immediately. So, in fact, he takes that line of play, precisely read Spine of Ishsaw on the Progenitus, heads to the graveyard, Buried Ruin gets it back. And we're going to start netting some mana here with our Krog Clan Ironworks at two, sacrificing the Terrarian. So no spells cast this turn from Matt Nass. These were just a couple of activated abilities. Uh, and it looks like Matt is just going to, going to do what he can in terms of uh, surviving, destroy the Primeval Titan. But we know that Lou has gas still in the tank, and he's going to be able to win this game. Wow. Prime time down, but their escape shift from Helio Lu. And here we go, doing some sacrificing, finding some mountains, and there is the handshake. Helio Lu takes down Matt Nass. Two games to one here in round 11. Titan shift over Clark Clan Ironworks. And Reed, is that how you would have imagined that matchup to go? You know, I would have picked Ironworks as a favor as a favorite, particularly with a player as experienced as Matt Nass. However, uh, Lou indicated that he had a really, really effective sideboard plan. He had a fast clock. He was able to kill Matt pretty uh, decisively in both of those sideboarded games once Primeval Titan entered the equation and his disruption, the combination of Relic of Progenitus, Ancient Grudge, and Damping Sphere really did a lot to slow Matt down. So it was an effective plan and he executed it well. Really cool match to watch there as well. Okay, well we've got round 12 coming up. I've got to go back to my Dragon Lair and protect my gold, you know, as I do. All right, more magic on the way. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 